So here's some untwisted sheep wool. And if we pull it apart, you can see it really has no strength to it. It just separates. So we take another piece and we twist it, you know, just a little bit. That makes it really strong. Now it's got some strength to it. And that's the basics of how yarn is made. Have a good day. <laughs> just kidding. We'll be going into a little bit more depth than that. But that truly is the basics of what makes yarn yarn. It's just twisting animal fiber like that. This is a drop spindle. This is really the first big innovation in spinning. And it's been used for many thousands of years. Uh, the basic premise is what I just showed you. You're twisting yarn and then when it's twisted, you wrap it around the spindle. So the real advantage of, of this drop spindle over doing it entirely by hand is that the spindle shape itself as you can see, kind of helps you spin it quickly and uh, efficiently. And then also, once you have spun it, you have this convenient place to store the yarn you've just spun. So the way it works is you just sort of put it on this hook and then you will take the untwisted fiber like this and you'll apply twist to it. And then once it's twisted enough, so I kind of messed it up here by, um, doing it before it had any twist. But once it's got some twist like that, you can use the spindle and you'll make your yarn. Again, once, once it's on there, you just twist it onto your spindle and you keep going. And that's the basics of a, a drop spindle. It's a very simple device. You can make your own or uh, there, you can buy them at fiber festivals for not that much money Two really extravagant ones that, that are more money. But um, I think that, you know, this is like using one of these is a real, even if you've got a spinning wheel and you've been using a spinning wheel, it's nice to use one of these because it shows you the real fundamentals of making yarn, where it's just twist it and put it onto a spindle like this. So now a little bit about the yarn we've just spun. This is called a single because it's a single strand. And what yarn typically does is you will take two of these singles and you'll actually twist them together back in on themselves and you'll get something that's twice as thick and twisting in on itself actually causes the yarn to um, increase in strength and kind of even itself out a little bit because you have two of the singles into a multi-ply yarn. And usually when people are talking about yarn, they're actually talking about two or more singles plied together. And I won't go into how plying is done. I, I've done that in other videos and there's other places where you can look about that. There's many different ways of plying. It's a pretty um, large topic and I'm just covering the basics of spinning. But uh, I will say that when you ply, you twist in the other direction and you can use a drop spindle to ply. You can use a spinning wheel as long as the spinning wheel supports um, twisting in both directions. Around the 11th century, the spinning wheel was invented. Now, initially, the spinning wheel was much different from a traditional spinning wheel that you would see today. It was very similar to the great wheel that uh, some people still use. The great wheel, or these early spinning wheels, looked something like this. These early spinning wheels allowed more speed and control when making yarn. You spin these wheels with one hand and use the other hand to control the fiber and put it onto the spindle. You'll notice the spindle on these is very similar to a drop spindle. It just uses a large wheel to help it spin. In the 15th century, these treadles were added. These are the foot pedals that allow your feet to spin the spinning wheel. So that was a clever design because it allowed you to use both your hands and focus on the fiber instead of having to spin the wheel with your hand manually like you would have on a great wheel. So the foot treadle was a nice improvement. And then I would say perhaps the most impressive addition was this concept of a flyer. So this allows the spinner to both twist the yarn and put it onto a flyer, all sort of in the same step. And that's a really ingenious invention uh, that spinning wheels added. And I'm gonna spend a little time explaining how that works because that's probably the cleverest part on a 
spinning wheel that you might use today. So if you remember, when I was showing you on a drop spindle, I was having to twist the yarn and then put it on the spindle. And the miracle of these modern spinning wheels is that we don't have to do that anymore. It's all getting spun and pulled onto the bobbin at the same time. So there's not as many things that a person has to do and that keeps you a lot more efficient. Now the question is, how does it do that? I mean, that's sort of the clever bit of this flyer design. And what it really comes down to is it, it doesn't matter what type of uh, spinning wheel you have. You can have an e-spinner, you can have a double tre or a, a double drive, which has two belts coming to the flat, one coming to the flyer and one coming to the bobbin. You can have a scotch tension, and that's what this is set up as right now. And that's where you drive the flyer portion and you use this to slow down the bobbin. You're breaking the bobbin. And there's also an Ayers tension where you drive the bobbin and slow down the flyer. All of those are having a way so that the flyer spins at a different speed than the bobbin. So as long as you have the flyer going at a different speed from the bobbin, you're going to get twist and pulling things on. So if you look at like the extreme cases where the flyer is just spinning in the bobbin, let's say you have the brake set really high on the spinning wheel. So if it's just the um, bobbin's not moving, what's going to happen is you're going to get the fiber pulled on to the bobbin, but you're not going to get any twist. So that would be a case where your yarn would keep snapping, um, and that's not what you want. Another case in the extreme would be where you have no tension on the bobbin. So let's say this comes off, and now both of these would spin at the same speed. In this case, you're never going to get any yarn on the bobbin, but um, you'll get sort of an infinite amount of twist. So you don't want that case either. So what this scotch tension allows you to do in this case is you put a brake on there and you can adjust how much braking there is and that'll basically control how much pull the yarn has in your hand. And by releasing the yarn when it's properly twisted out of your hand, it goes on to the bobbin. So in this case, um, the flyer will be spinning faster. The bobbin still is spinning, but it's spinning a little, it's spinning slower. So in that case, the bobbin or the flyer twisting really quickly causes a lot of twist. And then the bobbin spinning slowly causes that twisted yarn to go on the bobbin. So as a spinner, I think understanding these kinds of things is actually really useful. It's not necessary, but if you ever run into any problems with your spinning wheel, like let's say there's no uptake, if you sort of understand that principle and you'd say, oh, there's no uptake, that means for some reason the bobbin and the flyer are spinning at the same speed. So you can sort of figure that out, like maybe the um, yarn got stuck on one of your um, sliding hooks here and therefore it isn't pulling in. So you'd be looking for cases that would cause your bobbin not to spin um, any slower than your flyer. So I think sort of understanding these principles like that are, are really useful. I also am very impressed with this flyer design. As someone who's made a lot of e-spinners, I really have thought about the design of this flyer and I've tried lots of different designs but I keep coming back to the same principles. I haven't been able to come up with uh, a better design than, you know, those people who came up with a spinning wheel like five, six hundred years ago. So uh, I think it's a, a really clever way of twisting and putting yarn on a bobbin. And, and while there are other ways of doing it, I've made some prototypes and shared videos about sort of some of those exotic spinning wheels ideas that I've had um, on YouTube. It's None of them are as practical as this. And and I, I think that just talks to like how clever of an idea it was. And it's not, I mean, it seems simple, but really great inventions seem simple afterwards. But the person who came up with them still deserves um, a lot of credit for um, doing it. And the spinning wheel came along in steps. So there's no one person that gets all of the credit for it. But I, I still think, you know, 
people were clever. The electric spinner, it still works on the same principle that those treadle spittle wheels work with, uh, but because it can, you know, fit in the palm of your hand, these are, you're able to take these a lot more places and uh, use them that you can't, you know, at knitting night and things like that, where you wouldn't necessarily always want to take along a big treadle wheel. So um, I like treadle wheels, but um, I mostly make, or I entirely make uh, e-spinners just because I found that as my niche. And uh, I think that uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with an e-spinner that you can't on a treadle wheel. But anyways, uh, e-spinner, treadle wheel, they all work sort of at the same, on the same principles when you sort of look at how the fire works. And I, I hope everyone found the video today interesting. Thanks for watching.